All right. I'm going to start the meeting. It's 5.15 on Thursday, uh, May 18th. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the first thing on the agenda is the approval of the minutes from February 25th, 2020, regular session. Just a reminder, we actually have to do just the school choice. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hearing. Hearing school choice. Didn't even see that in bright red right on top of my No head. problem. <laughs> All right, so open the hearing for the school choice at 515. So at, at this point, due to the usual kind of class size and space and things like that, we are not recommending that Brimfield participate in school choice for next year. So that would be our recommendation. Anybody have any questions, concerns? No. no. Anybody want to make a motion? I'll make a motion to accept um, the recommendation from Dr. Nozick. We have a second. I second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank, Thank you. Call. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I know that was a cheating way of doing yeah. it, but. <laughs> so now on to approval of minutes. Um, you either do them both together or separately. It's you guys. How do you want to do it? Um, I can make a motion to approve the minutes from our February 25th meeting and the April 15th uh, virtual school meeting. I'll, I'll second that since I was there. Does anybody have any questions or concerns about the minutes? No, no one? Look good? I thought yep. they looked good. I looked good. Do we have a, a motion and a second? Do we have all in favor? Aye. Aye. I'll abstain because I didn't attend. Okay. Sounds good. So that's one abstain for D. Financial report. Do you want me to do like roll calls on Yeah, that? if you can, yeah. you can do that, Karen. Yeah, that's yeah. fine. You don't need to say it. I can just okay. say it. Yay, Karen. That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, um, you have the latest report in your packet, and there are a couple of things that definitely warrant discussion as we try to finish this year. And please let me know if I've talked about them already. I don't think I have. So um, last month or whenever we met last, did I talk at all about the transportation reduction yep. that we reduced okay so then at this point it's just a reminder to you all not that i mean we all know things are very tight things are okay maybe this year for both schools and other town departments but going forward they're going to get rough um so that being said this is certainly a year even more than in the past that we're looking to try and turn as much back to the town so they can have it in their free cash coffers for future budgets. So this first bullet is just a reminder then, if nothing else, even if we were having a bad year, we would wanna make sure we're turning back to the town those negotiated transportation savings. So that's just there kind of as a reminder to all of us. I do think that we're in a position that we've got a, a, a couple of other lines that have surpluses so we should be able to turn back, um, a, you know, a, a more than that in a few areas. Um, but I do want, I did mention last month, correct, that we were serving the, the, uh, the, the food, the bags. Yeah. Um, I think I mentioned then we're doing it because it's the right thing to do. Um, since then, we certainly have gotten the criteria, um, the designation that allows us to submit for reimbursement, but we're paying out a lot more in labor than we are putting out meals. So we're gonna incur a loss. Um, so this is just um, the reminder. We already have a food service expense line in the budget that we haven't fully expended. I certainly anticipate by year end we will and probably more to make sure that the cafeteria fund doesn't end up in the red. So that's, Go ahead, did you, Jen. Did you have an amount of Brimfield's um, portion of it? 
Um, I I don't yet. Let me take a look okay. at. That's all right if you don't. It's no big. Yeah, and well, and here's the thing. I think the revolving fund actually started off with a with a decent balance because I think last year we were in a position. So if I can, if even if I don't get it back to the same beginning balance, if if we can put a little bit extra in there, that'd be great. But I suspect we'll probably need. I mean, there's ten thousand or so here not spent, and we probably need at least another ten or twenty thousand. So. I'll let you know, you know, when we wind down everything, but just the reminder before we close things up, there's two things that we need. Well, one we need to do, one I'm going to recommend you do. So we absolutely need to make sure we leave your revolving fund in the black, because if it was in the red, the town would get hit on their free cash. So we can't let that happen. So we okay. will bail that out when we think when everything closes out in June. The other thing that I, the only other thing I recommend we do before closing out and turning back as much as we can is I do recommend that we consider purchasing another cart of um, Google Chromebooks. We have loaned out so many. I don't know, again, if I mentioned it last month or not. It's great that we had devices to loan out, but we're a little bit concerned with the condition they may come back in or not. So we cannot start ourselves in a new year that who knows if we may end up in another remote scenario again at some point during next year. Um, I don't want us to start off with less equipment than we started this year with. So if you folks are okay, I'd like to get another cart and put us in good shape no matter what happens next year technology wise. And then the rest we're going to shut down and turn back to the town. Does that make sense? Yeah. You all okay with that? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, I would like to talk a minute about fiscal 21 if no one has any more questions on fiscal 20. Okay. So we continue, uh, we all across the state continue not to have any answers and just keep looking into our crystal balls to see what, you know, what could happen. We very well, well may not have, no, until after July 1. Um, I think what most, most towns, at least in our district, I can't say across the state, but at least in our five town district, most towns are moving forward and having their town meeting in June. Most of them are, for those who don't know, are actually booking them up here at the high school to allow for distancing, which is awesome um, that we can, we can offer that and the law is gonna allow the town meetings to be at the high school so we can distance in that auditorium. I'm sure Brimfield can, we can meet your Brimfield's needs with that. So um, that being said, um, I think it's very possible that all of our towns go through a town meeting, feel that we have a tentative budget and come fall, we may end up having to come back together to deal with potential shortfalls. Um, even if the state did have their budget set by June 30th, this is very likely to be a year that we're talking about nine C cuts, which we've talked about in the past. Um, but usually it's the fall that, you know, we find out that the mark is not going to be met. So we, we've got to keep that in mind no matter what, even with get budget, we've got to keep that in mind. That being said, um, Aaron and I are already looking across the districts. Brimfield's actually in better shape from a school perspective than the other towns, because if you remember, Tantasqua's share of the assessment is down quite a bit. So I think that's gonna help. Um, but there are other towns that are absolutely struggling um, and, and looking to have reductions across the board. So we're looking to do our fair share. Um, and one of the areas that we know we can do, I, you know, I guess even before being asked, we're looking to squeeze everything we can. So we have a couple of areas in professional development that we know we can squeeze one of the federal grants to pay the coaches. And we can put a hold on out of district professional development and the district wide where sometimes we'll pay consultants um, we can, we can, next year, we can keep all professional development in district and count on our 
our, our skilled staff to put on various different sessions. So what I'm suggesting at this point between the coaches and the district-wide professional development, I think there's $8,800 that we can pull out of this budget. Um, and, we're, and we're doing the same thing in all the others. So across the district, we would do that. So I guess just to do our little bit at this point in time until we know what's happening you know, later on, I would recommend that you all vote to reduce our request by 8,800 and make your new fiscal 21 request 4,056,666. You say that number again, sorry. Yep, 4,056,666. And it will all come out of the professional development page. Whenever you want to look at your detail, you'll see there was a $4,000 coaching line and a $4,800 district-wide line. I'll make a motion to reduce the request for the fiscal year 2021 budget to 4 million Do we have a second? All in favor? Aye. Yes. Okay, so I'll send an email to, to Mike, your finance committee, just to let them know um, because they do have our other numbers. So, you know, we'll bring that down and then we'll just do what everyone else in the state and the country is doing and just, you know, go through slowly but surely. And, you know, if there's more that we have to cut, we'll roll up our sleeves and, and do what we have to. Um, just a little bit more optimistic in Brimfield than some of the other communities because of your Tantasqua dip. Tantasqua may have some significant cuts because any reduction in Chapter 70, they've got to deal with within their budget. They're not going to come back and ask for different assessments. Um, so we're working on that also. So you're not anticipating any kind of increase based on if we end up going virtually in the fall? No, uh, increase, well, first, uh, do we anticipate increased needs? You bet. We can say right now, we absolutely know, we all know that we're going to need to provide more remediation. We may need more technology. We're going to need more cleaning supplies. We're going to need more social, emotional um, yeah. health staff. Um, that all being said, we can't turn around and increase our request when we know darn well towns are going to need lower requests. Right. Um, Aaron will probably talk a little bit uh, later. We, we will get some funds from the federal um, government, via the state via federal. The CARES Act will give us a little pool of money that we do think we, we will hold. It's actually going to be given to us for two years. Like We have two years to spend it. So okay. we can spend it on anything COVID related. So everything that I just mentioned, we could use it on. So we'll wait and see uh, once we actually get it, what we might need. So that all being said, at least there's a little bit of backup there. Um, but if we end up back in a remote world, with any luck, it would just be for a few weeks at a time or maybe a month because we just need to put the brakes on for a little while. Um, and again, I doubt then that we would have much more savings than we're dealing with right now because we've still got to pay our staff to teach remotely. Um, we might start the year off purchasing a little less supplies where sometimes we'll buy a whole year's at a time. Maybe we'll wait and only do a half a year so that we have some place to go in the fall if we need to cut. Uh, things like that. Okay. Okay. We'll keep you posted. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay, communications. For communications. Erin's talking, but she's, or Mike's off. Oh, are you muted, Erin? <laughs> you gotta unmute. Like I'm at my house. Everyone <laughs> sees my go. lips moving, but no one is listening to me. <laughs> um, so there were um, just the article. This was forwarded to us by Tony Bent, who facilitated, uh, as you know, our retreat in the fall. So we thought that the school committees would enjoy 
reading that, the seven sides of effective school board members. And then the second item we put in um, is a little bit of info regarding what goes in the family bags, the food bags twice a week. So the food service director at Tantasqua had started to do this, not just put in the, um, the menus, which go everywhere, but this little bit of kind of word search, some fun things so that when the families get their bags, there's a little bit, little bit of something fun in there as well. Yeah, so we said that as an FYI, but we probably since our last meeting, we did change from one day a week to two. So we found out when we finally at least got the designation to allow us to get a little bit of reimbursement, it included being able to be able to get reimbursed for weekend um, okay. food provisions. So as soon as we found out we were out for the rest of the year and got that designation, we moved to bags on Monday and Thursdays. So for Monday, they get three days worth and on Thursdays, they get enough food to cover them for the weekend. And that's just a sample of the little menus of what's in the bags and the little activities that um, Missy up here has been doing, which is awesome. Do we know again how many students in Brimfield we service or no? Um, boy, if you give me one second, we did one this morning. Give me one second, I'll let you know what the total Brimfield is. I think we talked about it last month. Yeah, right? I'm thinking it's in the 40s or so. Right. Let me take a quick peek and I'll get back to you. Okay. All right, anybody from public access? Anybody in the public? Nobody from the public. Principal's report. Ryan. Principal's report. It looks frozen. <laughs> yeah, me too. Well, Rick, before he goes at it, then Brimfield's pushing out 38 bags of food um, each time. Okay. Oh. Oh. There he popped back in. <laughs> there you go. Now there he's sorry. I keep losing you. There you go. Oh, he's broke. Did you put the number, Dab? What, Deb, you, he was asking about the number for the food bags. Yeah, what, was, what did I just say? 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 33-ish, it's about 33. Between elementary and secondary, I think maybe only half a dozen of them are secondary. They're mostly all elementary. High okay. 30. Oh, his signal he looks frozen again. <laughs> he is again. The wonders of online meetings. Yes, right? exactly. Oh boy. Do you want me to oh, go? Did she ask? Oh. Oh. He's coming to get you. What? I feel like I'm talking to my husband on the phone. What? 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 <laughs> yes, we're on your principal's report, Brian. Can you guys hear me? No, I can't. Barely. Don't move. Barely. <laughs> Don't move. Just talk. <laughs> All right. I'll start talking. You can pick up little pieces, maybe. <laughs> um, but we're on to phase three, we're continuing to do the video conference calls, the one-on-one um, -on -one phone video calls, emails, work packets, projects, um, and reading lists. Um, and at the start of this School, as you remember, we were just focusing on rich and supplemental learning, teaching concepts that are most critical for success at that grade level. So we're starting to teach new content and uh, um, skills that haven't been taught at this year. So that's where we are now with our remote learning plan um, we talked a little bit about and uh, we just talked a little, little bit about the uh, food distribution Deb said we 38 that our support staff continues to connect with students each day um, in the video conference calls taking part in professional development and then um, just collab Collaborating with classroom teachers too. So,
Um, also wanted to mention, I know all of you were, were part of the wave parade that we had back in March, and just what a success that was. I appreciate all the teachers that came out and the families that took part in that. I think that was really good for the community to be a part. Do we think he's done? <laughs> yeah. He's gone. We can read the paper. <laughs> <laughs> we'll read it. <laughs> There's a good number of students, though. Did you see the, the back, the enrollment, 318? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. I gotta find my agenda. It's Tantasqua. Okay. Tantasqua work? Yes, that's me. That's you. Um, and you know, it's really funny. Um, Deb and Aaron um, pretty much touched on most of the discussions that we had at the meeting. The only thing that um, I'm sure that Aaron would probably touch on soon, but the um, Tantasqua meeting and the joint meeting are on the 26th. The joint is at 6 p.m. And I believe they'll be sending out a link for that also. Um, they discussed the change of the last day of school, but I think everyone has received that for it's uh, June 12th and the virtual staff is uh, June 15th. And that was pretty much, and they talked about the meal for the kids. What was discussed? It was a short but sweet. Sounds good. Okay. Do we have any students that we know that are falling through the cracks? Like, are, is there anyone that... I know we have a lot of Chromebooks out there and everything, but in terms of being behind. I don't know if Brian can hear or, but. Um, um, oh. Can you guys hear me now? Barely. Erin, <laughs> other words? On that one. <laughs> we, um, the, we kind of, uh, we meet weekly as a leadership team and we kind of look at that number uh, yeah all the schools I, mean, I, I can erin <laughs> and i have had this conversation where uh, he's gonna have to go stand on his roof Yes. On one leg for the dog. Yes. <laughs> Aaron, Aaron, why don't you go ahead? Thank you. So we did. I we meet weekly, the leadership team, and then I had, um, I think, two weeks ago, maybe, um, as we prepared for phase three, had individual principal meetings, and we talked exactly about that, making sure that we knew families who didn't have access, um, if that was the issue, or if we had families that were just struggling for all sorts of reasons. Um, right. I think Delia, you said it right in the beginning, you're, you're dealing with your own job and your own work expectations while you have your children at home um, who are trying to access curriculum. So it, it's, we certainly understand people um, are super busy and it's an overwhelming time. So um, we do continue to monitor that. The figure was as low as 1%, kind of as high as 3%, but still uh, I think a pretty good number of families um, that just continue to, to really struggle with engaging with the remote learning and we continue to reach okay. out um, and um, yeah, yeah the, the principals keep me. We're, one, we're in that 1% because we are having issues with the times and stuff. And still every week, uh, Mrs. Kane and Mr. Ledbetter have been reaching out to us, just checking in with us, making sure everything's good. So as that one, one to 3%, it's been, it's been good coverage for, you know, the communication between the school and the parent me. So D, yeah, that, I just that wanted ain't. to make sure we were, you know, if there was other resources we needed to think about or anything else, because there's plenty of parents out there who are trying to educate their kids. And I know we have a fair number that were in special programs. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so I just want to make sure if there was anything else we could be doing to support that and make sure that everyone was not being left behind. And anyone who's in one of those specialized programs is receiving their um, additional support. We're doing things, whether it's social emotional support groups um, or, you know, 
uh, Wilson Reading so group for that. We're holding ed plan uh, meetings. So we're really doing the absolute, I think, best we can to try and keep right. uh, the forward momentum. Okay. And are we planning already for next year? Because the social emotional for all of the kids is going to be. Oh, oh, like, oh. For, for sure. Kind we talk planning. a lot about what school will look like next year. I think the governor's announcement today that there'll be some loosening and really a nice plan up till June 25th. It's really the first glimmer of, I think, optimism or good news that we can um, hang our hats on. So we're prepared or we're in the process certainly of preparing for, for every possibility from what the the requirements might be from a physical standpoint or on public health requirements to understanding that there will likely be curriculum gaps, learning gaps, and how do we best assess that the, as soon as we can. And then certainly as you identify those kind of SEL um, supports that are going to be needed and, and for staff. I mean, staff haven't been back in the building in some cases since they left March 13th. So to get back to our normal our new normal, if you will, is um, something we're certainly certainly aware of and, and um, looking for that, looking to be ready for that. Okay. Thank you. Does anybody else have any questions? Okay. Um, PTO report. I don't think we have anybody from PTO. Do you guys have anybody? Yeah, I didn't get anything. I don't even meeting. Yeah, I, I mean, oh, there's nothing going on. Mm -hmm. um, report of committees. None of us met, <laughs> obviously. Um, superintendent's report. Thank you. So Brian touched on it a little bit, and he included um, in his report just the family letter that you all likely got as family members, or I had sent it to the school committee as well, just, just in case. Um, to see that we are in phase three, we've identified those power standards or the prerequisite standards that the state really feels students need to be exposed to and get direct uh, work with for them to be successful to go to the next year. So we identified those. The teachers at Brimfield are working in, in multiple different ways from the online instruction to some um, having the, the Google classes to um, some folks who just, it's easier for their child to do a paper packet. Just, it's too much. It's too overwhelming to be online. The school's accommodating that. Whatever kids need and families need, we're happy to do. So uh, you saw in that potentially that there's a phase four, and that's kind of where the commissioner's challenging us to be ready for what school will look like um, and what we need to do when students and staff eventually return to school. So um, we continue to work on that. The last day of school uh, did go out in a connect at all sort of families. It's down at the bottom under new business for a formal vote, but that will be, as Jen mentioned, June 12th will be the last day of remote learning. Uh, the June school committee meeting right now, it's June 23rd. I'm not sure. I think we have not heard from the town of Brimfield about a rescheduled town meeting. So I think we'll just keep that. But if for some reason, and Michelle, I don't know if you have any um, insight intel on that, um, but if it ended up being something like the 22nd, then maybe we would just move our school committee meeting or something like that. But we'll hold it as is hoping that we actually have some information from the state as Deb referenced, we are just all- Michelle, did they vote that yet? Or did you just give me a, a wing and a prayer of a hope? I, I gave you a wing and a prayer. Okay, well, we'll, we keep, that to, we'll yeah. keep that to ourselves then. Okay. Yeah, because we don't meet until the, we don't meet till next Tuesday, so. Okay. Yeah. All right, so we will it's keep in the that- general area anyway. Okay. Yeah, so, that, was between, that was between me, Paul, and you, so. Yeah, okay. okay. So we will keep that as is the 23rd. And then if we have to move it, that would be um, okay as well. And then Jen mentioned the joint meeting. We were hoping, you'll see on the agenda, it simply has the date and time because we were just so hoping that today the governor was gonna say, oh, it can be gatherings of 50 people or more. So that did not happen. So we will have our virtual joint meeting at 6 p.m on May 26th. And that link, yeah, will go out that morning. Okay. Anybody have any questions? 
oh, the CARES Act, I'm sorry, um, the uh, in money that can funnel through the federal government to our states to cover anything COVID related. Uh, Brimfield did get a, a fairly good amount of money at $47,339. It was actually based on distributed through the Title I formula, and we were told to expect about 80% of that, and it's probably like a couple hundred dollars more than 80%. So it was right exactly where we expected. Uh, you can opt to use it if you needed it this year to cover additional cleaning costs or food service costs or things like that. But they highly encouraged us to wait till July 1st to start to use it. And as Deb said, um, it's running through 2022, uh, 2022. So obviously, it's not a lot of money if it's supposed to be a two-year problem right. solving or stopgap measure, but it allows us the flexibility should we need, and we're thinking more in the way of cleaning or public health type accommodations that we might need for the kids or staff. So we're, we're fortunate that we don't need it to end out this year, um, and we'll just continue to, to see what it is we need. We might decide that it's going to be all academic support, all after school, supplemental ed next year, every day of the week after school, academic help. So we're, we're really allowed a great deal of freedom with that money based on need. Sounds good. Okay. Old business. Oh, so you've got that lovely laundry <laughs> list. Yep. Um, the good news is there's no new ones. <laughs> um, also, we've been through all of these at the first meeting. We haven't had any questions or concerns. So if you don't have any, you can vote the whole lot on second reading in one vote and Karen can take it from there. Kim, you're up. Yeah, I was going to say, I just need to say the abbreviations, right? Or just say the whole allotment. If, 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 if you vote all of them, if you want to say from BGC down to CHCA, Karen will fill them all in in the minutes. Okay. I make a motion to um, approve the policies BGC all the way down to CHCA-E on second reading. Perfect. I, we have a second? I second. Yep. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That's all of us. It is. All right. New business. Thank you. Just a few new items. The first relates to um, the teacher evaluation and the educational support folks evaluations. Both of those tools are in the contract that you ask me to make sure that I am delivering on. So um, there do need to be some changes due to the pandemic. We were not able to meet our evaluation timelines, obviously. Um, and there were also concerns on behalf of the teachers that uh, teachers would be assessed or evaluated based on remote learning. And there's just no way we were gonna do that. So um, left with that, I am looking just for your, for your formal vote and support to work with the teachers as well as the ed support units for Brimfield in order to um, just work through a, a one-time only unique process for evaluation this year. Um, I make a motion to um, approve the changes that Dr. Nozick mentioned about the teacher evaluations for this one-time event at this time for the um, to work with the, the teachers, right? Yep. Yeah. I said, okay. <laughs> Kim, you gotta do these ones. <laughs> All in favor? <laughs> Aye. Aye. You spit it right out. I was letting yeah. it go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And the other, this is also more of a formality only because this is not your typical calendar that you vote where you vote the snow days at the end. We actually amended in live time your calendar with, um, <laughs> with Michelle's support. I did reach out and, and work through much of this with the chairs because trying to get 36 people at once, it was just, it's just hard. Um, so, what was decided was that the teachers would work through and provide remote learning on both Good Friday and through April vacation. 
Um, we did not amend the calendar last, last month, and that was purposeful. The teachers overwhelmingly felt like if there was hope on May 18th that we were going to have some June weeks, let's not say we're getting out June 12th. Let's say, let's see what happens. And if we could pick up three or four days in June, maybe we would take three or four days from remote learning off in May so we could see real kids in real time. Um, so I appreciate their support of that. Um, but unfortunately, we know what happened. The school was canceled for the rest of the year. So with that being said, by working through April vacation on, a, on Good Friday, the last day for students is June 12th and faculty is June 15th. Um, and I'd appreciate just a, just a vote to the calendar change as presented. I make a motion to vote for the calendar change as presented. Second. Does anybody have any questions about it? Nope. Okay. No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I do have one question. Does this impact our contracts with the teachers any in terms of their time and stuff? No, they work 183 days and that June 15th is the 183rd day. Um, okay. But get, yeah, so we're, we're good. Okay. Thank you. And then the final item is just the superintendent evaluation process. Hopefully everyone received the documents as well as the link from Greg. If you didn't, Greg is on the line here so you can let him know. Um, and the turnaround time was quite fast. A, it was hard to get it out on time. We had shot actually for that last full week in April back in the fall when the timeline was established with the goals, but obviously um, it, things just, Something right. happened, and so we've um, we've been digging out a little bit. So those went out at the end of last week. So you're asked to fill them in by this Wednesday, May 20th, just so that they can be compiled and ready for the joint meeting on the 26th. So I don't know if you have any questions on that, and hopefully everybody received them. I have to admit, I like the short print fame because it made me say, okay, I'm not going to remember. And I said, okay, I'm doing it right now. <laughs> I don't know about anybody else. <laughs> that's what our data told us after many years of a three or four week window. Yeah, is that too much. Yeah. It, yeah, you just put it to the yeah. side and say, at least my kitchen counter at home, I'll get to it, I'll get to it. And then, yeah, time yeah. evaporates. So thank you. And that, that is it. Anybody have any questions? Nobody? No. Public access to? Again, Thanks there's... for having me. There you go. <laughs> hey, good seeing you. <laughs> Congratulations on your A, Heidi. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was the hardest day I ever earned in my whole life. <laughs> good for you. All right. That's the end, right? That's, that's it. All right. Good. So, uh, meeting adjourned at... 5.53 p.m. Have a good one, everyone. Bye. See you Thanks, next time. Take care. Thanks so much, right. folks. Take care. Thank, Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.